Hi, I'm Stacy Rossetti. Everybody, thank you so much for hopping on. Listen to this, listen to this session with Ted. We're going to go over tax lien certificates. Can you go ahead and review everything for me, Ted, from the last video that we did? Well, I can do a quick review. Uh, tax lien certificates are available in half of the counties in the United States. They're outrageous in what they pay. So tax lien certificates can pay 16, 18, 24, all the way up to 36%. Uh, you can buy them from the local government. They either sell them online or you can go to uh, live auctions, depending upon what the county announces. Uh, they're always listed on the county website and they list them in the newspaper. And I'll show you a list of tax lien certificates. This is a list for Jacksonville, Florida. Look at that. Jacksonville, Florida. And there's no uh, there's no pictures in this newspaper. It's just 32,000 tax lien certificates. I'll show you some other ones here. And just Let me reach over here to my other desk. And I'll show you some other ones. It's amazing how many certificates are available. But they're available. So I just picked some in Florida because Florida has a million tax certificates every single year. This is the Tampa newspaper. And again, no pictures, just hundreds and hundreds of this one has about 16 or 18,000 tax lien certificates. So there's always plenty for everybody. You never have to worry about it. they never run out of tax lien certificates. And they also sell tax defaulted properties. So we can talk about those a little later on. So are they like, you know, are they available in every state? How does how does that work? Well, every state sells defaulted property, but half of the states are very benevolent. The ones that are benevolent sell tax lien certificates. Now, why do I say they're benevolent? Certainly they want to collect the tax, but they will let the property owner stay in the property so they don't kick them out. So a tax lien, those states are pretty darn nice to the people. They don't kick them out. All the time it's in default, they just stay in the property. And if they if it's a two-year certificate, it could let... They could stay in the property for two years without paying the tax. Now, that doesn't mean that there are other payments they don't have to pay those. They're going to have to do that. All right. But in all states, all of the states will sell tax defaulted property. And those properties, when people don't pay the tax, like in, let's take California or New York, the ones that have a lot, a lot of big population, if they don't pay their tax, the government just comes in and they give them due process notice. And then they say, all right, we're going to take the property. They seize it. And then they push the people off the property. They sell the property at an auction. Now, the key to that business is they sell the property at very close to the back taxes. So if it was a $400,000 house, they will probably start the bidding at five or $10,000. Now, it doesn't mean they'll sell at that. But if nobody shows up at the auction, that property could sell at less than 10 cents on the dollar. I've seen it happen. Usually they'll sell for 20 or 30 cents on the dollar. Some people will bid all the way up to 50% on a property. And why would they do that? Well, if it was a $400,000 property and you could get it for 200,000, well, I think you'd, have, you'd make that decision. So some people will bid more. I, for example, I'll bid up to 30 or 40% for a colonial house, if you know what that is. Big old colonial houses are on five or six acres with huge oak trees and all that. Old time Atlanta, old time uh, upstate New York. Those, uh, those houses are really valuable because people want to live in them. But these are used and abused. They're not brand new. That's for sure. Why? I mean, why am I just hearing about this now? Why hasn't my broker told me about this? Uh, well, your broker's in business to help you out. And what brokers have to do is they have to earn commissions. There's no commissions on tax lien certificates. It's the same problem with attorneys. It's the same problem with other advisors. They have to earn commissions. Well, tax liens and, and tax defaulted property there's no commissions on these. You're going to buy it directly from the government. So a tax lien certificate, you invest in the government, you get a check back from the government. A tax deed, you buy from the local county, and then you own the property. So there's no commissions allowed on it. So that's why brokers don't talk about it. They don't talk about it at all. Yeah. Wow. yeah. Well, what that about... So, oh, sorry, I'm, no, I'm no. not saying the broker's bad. I'm just saying, yeah. you know, it's, it's the way they have to make their money. They have to make their money on commissions. Yeah. Yeah. So um, so a lot of the people that uh, follow me and listen to me, they're uh, from outside the country as well, too. Can people from outside the country do this? Well, absolutely. Uh, I teach this in all the Canadian provinces. So we teach it in the UK. Uh, we teach in Australia, Singapore, uh, those places. So anywhere they can get an American bank account and they speak English, they, they can do it fine. You see, all the counties here uh, we're the only island left in the world where everybody speaks just one language. And so the county employees here only speak English. So you have to be able to speak English and you have to be able to research in the English. 
uh, and you need an American bank account. They won't take Deutschmarks and they won't take yen. They won't do any of that. So uh, you, you have to have an American bank account to be able to do it. But I have I have literally hundreds of clients, and I'll even show you some of those. And I'll show you some in, in a few minutes of uh, people are making a lot of money from Canada because it's a tough it's a tough job to make money in Canada. It's very very difficult for people. They're, they're always looking outside of Canada to be able to make some money. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Interesting. So do you have to, um, like, do you have to have cash when you go, like when you buy these or how, how does the, how does that work? So I heard with auctions, you need cash. Well, it's, it's probably going to be an equivalent of cash. Okay. So if you're going to go by the way, this can all happen online. So there's plenty of online okay. bidding sites. So okay. an online bidding site, what they'll have you do is they'll have you submit the money early by that. I mean, you'll do it with a, with a bank draft. Okay. So the bank draft will, will be there. And the, the, they'll let you bid up to the amount that's in, in the bank draft. All right. But every auction will have rules. All right. The rules aren't hard to find. You go online, you go online, you find the county that you want to go. First thing you do is you'll find out all the rules for whatever the auction is. And some of them will actually accept cash. Now, recently, we're having counties now that actually will take a credit card, which is amazing. So I bought, I bought nine properties in, not last year, the year before, nine properties in upstate New York. And I just use a credit card uh, all at this at, at one auction. I just kept going, kept, kept buying because I could use the credit card to do it. And, the, and then I do the same thing in Michigan. Now, right now, while we're talking, uh, they have the auctions in Michigan. So they, they'll auction the 67 counties there. So those auctions will be three or four counties every single day. And people go there and they buy. Oh, I've, I've had people buy as many as 60 properties in six years and just use a credit card. Wow, nice that's crazy. Yeah, yeah they, they're able to pay off the credit card in, in pieces while they're getting the property ready to, to resell. And most of our clients try to resell the properties that don't, you know, they don't put big down payments on. They try to sell those with payments to people that have marginal credit. So they do installment sales. A lot of people want to buy installment sale. That's a big deal in the United States. A big yeah. deal. Interesting. Yeah. I heard you. I heard you like mention New York uh, a, a couple of times. Like, why do you buy in New York? Just curious. Well, I'm look. I'm looking at. Um, uh, so I've been doing this for 30 years. So I don't want to go and uh, I. I do, but I don't want to do this. I don't want to go buy every property that I can buy for ten thousand dollars. Put another ten in it, and then take the property and do an installment sale. I don't want to do it. I just want to go make lumps of money. So I just want to buy big properties. So in upstate New York, especially an hour out of New York City or up to three hours out of New York City, they'll have a, a lot of a lot of properties, four to 10 acres and they have big oak trees. And they'll, have, they'll have colonial houses. Now those colonial houses are worth four to $600,000 in today's market. And those properties will go to auction at, a, at they'll have starting bids a, a very low, you know, of, of um, maybe fifty thousand dollars, and but they'll go for a hundred and fifty. But what happens at those auctions? As soon as you get to a hundred thousand dollars, I can tell you right now, there's there's only one other bidder. There's not going to be five other bidders. So I want to. I'll pay for a for a four to six hundred thousand uh, big property like that. I'll pay a hundred to one hundred fifty for it, because I know I'm going to be able to double my money. I mean, there's going to be such a big gap. I'm talking about dollars, not percent. So Got someone it. said, you pay 50%. I said, yeah, I pay 50%. But 50% of $800,000 is, uh, is a lot of money. You know? Yeah. So, so I want, that's why. But I don't teach that. I teach people, buy the properties, eight, ten, twelve thousand dollars $12,000. I'm going to show you an example yeah. of okay. a guy in, in uh, I taught him from Canada. And he had a lot of property, understood it. I said, look, be conservative. The best investment you're going to find in the United States today and for the next five years is going to be residential buildable lots. If you can remember that, you'll make a fortune. Why will you make a fortune? Because everybody that you and I know was basically born in the house. They were conceived in the house. They were born. They lived in that house. They grew up in the house. So when they go to auction, what do they want? They want houses. So what do they do with the price? Why they not? don't even look at the residential lots and 25% of every auction, this is after 30 years, 25% of every auction will be land. Now, if you don't know okay. land, you got to get a land broker, yes. you got to do surveys, you got to do all that. But if you understand 
if it's a subdivision, got three or four residential lots, what's going to happen is there's going to be very low bidding on them. You'll probably get them for 10 cents on the dollar, and they're immediately worth three, four, five, ten times that. And you can resell them. Or if you wanted, you could hire a builder and you could build on it. So I taught him to buy it. So he bought in Riverside. He made $20,000. I'm going to show you a video on this. He made $20,000. He did this sitting in his basement. He sat in his basement and bought the property online, hired a broker in Riverside, California. The broker sold it. The property was worth over $200,000. He bought it, sold it, only made a $20,000 profit. But he did that in 60 days with his computer. My name is Kelly Osmack, and I'm from Regina, Saskatchewan. I'm a Ted Thomas student. I had purchased a, a lot in Riverside County, at Riverside. Uh, I purchased it for 35000 and uh, after I got my title, I listed it. It was listed for a month, and I got a full cash offer of $55,000 U.S. So that got him started. So then he went over to Seattle, and he bought a property over there, and I'm going to show you this on video, and he made a hundred and thirty thousand dollars on that one then he did another one in riverside california again and he bought a house he spent two hundred thousand at a value of seven hundred thousand after that deal i went to the uh, kitsap county in washington and purchased a five acre parcel um, in uh, kingston and i paid one hundred and thirty one thousand for that property, uh, it's, it was a, had a 1,300 square foot uh, manufactured home and a barn on the property. Really nice property. I had it listed at 280, and I received a full price offer in four days. I went back to Riverside because it's a great place. I love Riverside for whatever reason. In May, I bought another property. It's another. It's in Desert Hot Springs. It's uh, another five-acre parcel. It's it's yeah. awesome, yeah. It's I I bought this property wow. for one hundred and seventy-seven thousand dollars, five acres of land. I, on Zillow, they had it listed in in two thousand and eleven for seven hundred and ninety-eight thousand dollars. There's this house. There's there's a another nine hundred square foot nanny mother-in-law house. There's outbuildings. It's a beautiful property. I had a realtor go look at it, and he said, "Yeah, it's it's in like from the exterior, it's in looks like it's in decent shape. Depending what the inside is, he said it could range for anywhere from you know 500 to 800. I'll probably clear 100,000 U.S. on that deal. I've never left my basement office ever. <laughs> so you could go for big, or you could go for little. And I started very small to make sure he could make everything work." He did everything I just told you online. Mm -hmm. awesome. It was pretty amazing. So, yeah, good stuff. So, okay, so you know, so now that we've kind of talked about it a little bit, like which one should I buy? Tax lien certificates or tax defaulted properties? Well, start out with a couple of tax lien certificates, just so you know how to do it. So you see the government procedures, because a tax lien certificate, your chances of getting all your money back and a profit are 95, 98 percent. That's not much risk, okay? A tax defaulted property, you have a lot of real estate experience. I don't know what the real estate experience of your client is, but okay, you have a lot of experience. So a non-experienced person, start out with a tax line, but tax deeds are just fine because everything that you want to know about these tax defaulted properties, you can research online. We can have a coach teach you every step of the way to do it. You can have guides here that would talk to you while you're doing it, and you can buy those properties not from me. I don't sell any property. You can't buy any property from me. All right. They're going to buy directly from the county. Well, they're going to buy at 10 cents, 20 cents, 30 cents on the dollar. Now, remember, I said I'd spend a lot of money, but I don't tell my students to do that. I said, if they want to come with me and watch me do it, it's okay. But I'm not going to teach you to put, I don't know, I don't know your experience. You shouldn't, you shouldn't put up 100, 150, but I've been doing it for 30 years. So if I see a, a house worth 400 and I can get it for 150, I'm in right now. I buy it right now. What would I teach you? I would teach you spend $8,000, $10,000, and you'd do just fine. Well, let me give you an example of that. All right, so in Michigan, young couples, uh, old couple started out. Now, they're old couple. I mean, they're senior citizens. 
They had never done it before. We said, all right. They lived in Wisconsin. I didn't realize when they bought my course that they lived in Wisconsin. So I called them back and I said, look, you're in Wisconsin. I don't sell to people in Wisconsin. What do you mean you don't sell? Well, I don't sell because Wisconsin is the only state they want to buy up all the tax properties and think they can sell them. Now, I've been in business for 30 years, and I can tell you, they're going to take big losses on the, okay, because what does the government know about selling? And the county knows it and sell it, get rid of it. That's what they know. All right. So they went over to Michigan. They just drove over to Michigan. I'll give you the numbers. This is easy to figure out. They spent $8,000 for a house. We're going to show a picture of it while we're doing it. Spent $8,000 for the house. They cleaned it up. Spent another 4000 bucks cleaning it up. They did this, by the way, between Thanksgiving and January 1. All right. So they spent 8000 for the house at auction. It was worth fifty five. Not very much, fifty five. Okay, they spent 4000 fixing it up. They did what we told them. We told them to advertise. We really let the world know about it. We do Craigslist. We put it on eBay. We put signs on it. We use Trulia. We use a multiple listing. We do everything all at once. All right. So pretty quick, they had a buyer. And the buyer wanted an installment sale. Long story short, they sold the property, made 23000 profit. And because they gave an installment sale, they're going to make another fifteen. So that's thirty-nine thousand dollars after the making after only putting up twelve thousand dollars. I mean, that's the kind of profit you can make on tax certificate. First one, they did three in ninety days. Three of those in ninety days. And by the way, they used a credit card to buy it. Mm-hmm. Awesome, awesome. So when you say installment sale, like what do you mean by that? I mean the s- same kind of sale that you just bought it. Uh, when you go out and get a mortgage, everybody gets a mortgage. Installment oh, sales sorry. is familiar to everyone that ever had to buy a refrigerator. If you bought a car, it's an installment sale. All right. So right. I tell people, forget about mortgages. Forget about the deed of trust. Just forget it. You're going to get it. You're going to be an installment sale. So every one of my clients, I teach them, sell it on an installment sale. You have 25% of the buyers the bankers don't want. 25% of the people have a poor credit record. They have a poor FICA score. So what are they going to do? They can't buy a property. They can't buy anything. They've got bad, we'll finance them all day long. Why? We don't have to give them a deed. We give them a contract. They get a contract, it's an installment contract. You pay all the payments on there, then we'll give you the deed. It's as simple as that. Perfectly legal and going on since since they made the first loan. The first loan was that way. It's nothing more than an installment sale. All right. If you can buy a refrigerator, you can buy a house from us. Yeah. Okay. So basically they hold the note and then they sure. they're the ones that hold the note and then, okay. Then people so just instead of it. making a $25,000 profit, they made a $39,000 profit. Yes. Awesome. My name is Robert Hagan, but everybody calls me Sonny. And this is my wife, Marsha. In September of 2019, uh, we took the Ted Thomas classes. In November, we won the Fraser Street House. December, we accepted an offer already. January, we closed on it. It's it's amazing about the signs. You know, we we didn't even think anything about this sign stuff. And it was brought to our attention by uh, Ted that, you know, this is, this is a surefire way to get people's attention. And he's absolutely right. The lawyer cost us $600 to do the closing and set up the land contract that we sold it on. So altogether, uh, $11,557, uh, almost $12,000. Uh, the purchase price turned out to be thirty-five, oops, $35,000 with a profit of 23,443. Once we plugged all this in, it came up with that his payments would be $411. Total interest then, the interest made on all the money that was in here, just the interest, it amounts to $15,995.51. So that's just the interest. That's just profit. Basically, we hold the note on the on the property. We're the bank. It was $23,443 profit on the sale. And $15,995 profit on the note. So all of our investment, which of course we've already gotten back, and the profit on the property and the profit on the note. So the total for just the profit part, not our investment, but the total profit part is $39,438. And I think for that $12,000, that's a pretty good deal. Mm-hmm. We do that a lot in the a storage, in the storage world too. So now do you call that a um, installment sale or you call it something else? We call it owner financing. 
Okay, well, good. Thanks for saying the words for me. That's what we put on the sign. On the sign outside, we say owner financing. Yeah, okay. So internally. Okay. All right, I got to talk to your language, okay? Okay. Okay, okay good. Okay, so and then so what about like with the auctions? Like if we just say if we decide we do want to do the auctions, like kind of what does that look like? You know, can you tell me a little bit about that? Okay. Okay. Every state and every county is going to have at least one auction a year. Okay. All those auctions are listed. Uh every county will list auctions. Okay, so you can call uh, the county, you can go online. I'm gonna just use New York for this for the sake of doing it. I've just picked up some stuff on my desk. What I've got on my desk here is this is a book, an auction book for the for the for one county, for one county in California. And the county that I picked up is Los Angeles County. All right. These are all the properties that they're going to sell in Los Angeles County. Every page in the book has about eight properties for sale. OK, so this is going to be about fifteen hundred properties at that one auction. Anybody can attend that auction. Let's go, let's look at a little smaller auction than that. So let me get these are auction brochures. I, and knowing we're going to have a class, I just download these from the I download this from the internet. I put two staples in it, and I made a book out of it. Okay, all right. So this says on it, it says Sullivan County. Okay, there's 200 properties available at this auction. Tells me the date. Then when I they sent this, they put this up online. I can open it up. You won't be able to read it now. Okay, when I open it up, it it shows all the black dots over here. These are the pictures of the houses. They give me pictures of every house and then they describe it and then tell me what the minimum bid is. Anybody can go on this date and time to that auction. The only requirement you have is when you, be, if you bid, you better have money. If you don't have money, you're going to have a visitation from a sheriff because you can't go to auction a bid. You, you can't stop the auction and then, you know, not have money to do it. So you're going to have to have money. So you got, so before you go to the auction, you're going to have to qualify. Okay. They're just going to say, if you got money to buy and then they don't care how much you got there, but have you got money to buy? And so, all right, so every every county will have auction. All right, so here's a, here's another county. This one's about 100 miles from New York City. Same kind of thing. These are pictures of the properties that you see here, okay? They give you maps. You're going to map of the property. Everything that you could want, they're going to send to you, okay? The, these are the rules of the auction right here. They're not, nothing's hidden. Absolutely nothing's hidden, okay? The only thing you can't do is go inside the houses, they never let you go in because they don't know whether it's clean or neat or whatever. But every property is listed. Okay, so this property has 113, 113 properties. And they have that every year. And if you, you can't see them here because I can't get close enough. But if I brought my camera down from above, you would see these are colonial houses. These are big houses. Not unusual. So today they're having an auction in Michigan. And we looked at the list last night. It was 60, 65 acres. And it had three or four barns on it. It had two big houses on it. And the starting bid was $12,000. Wow. 65 acres, $12,000 starting bid. I wonder what that's going to go for. I don't know. I said, I, I said, uh, I think it'll go for a hundred thousand because those, the, they built barns, metal uh, barns are made out of metal now. So you can take them yes. apart. You can move them. So I got to put another pad down. It's good for the guy next door. I mean, I take the property, divide it up right away and sell it. Sell it to all the neighbors. Get my money back in eighteen months. Get get my money back and qu quadruple it in a property like that. Had beautiful rolling hills in it. It was unbelievable. It, this this happened all the time. Nothing new. Mm -hmm. So if I, I'm from Georgia. So uh, if I remember correctly, in the last video, you said Georgia, you can make twenty percent on that on our money. Is that true? Georgia is my favorite state, and I live in Florida. I live in a little island off the coast of Florida. All right, now I love Georgia for this reason. Georgia has 159 counties. That means there could be as many as 159 auctions every month. All right, now every county doesn't have an auction every month, but there's a lot of auctions. So if someone in Georgia doesn't pay their tax, the county is going to sell a redeemable deed. And we're out of time on this state. So you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna come back and tell you about Georgia on the next tape. But before I leave, I want you to write something down. Everybody that's looking at me right now, my name is Ted Thomas, and I've been involved in tax certificates for 30 years. And on the 27th of this month, I'm inviting you to come to a six hour, six hours, all about tax liens and deeds. And I'm going to bring 
four or five of my other coaches, and we're just going to talk about that. You'll be a mini expert at the end of the day. That's on the 27th. It's all day. It's a Saturday. If you're on the East Coast, it starts at 8. It starts at 11 in the morning and goes all the way through until 5 in the afternoon. We'll be right back with another video. Awesome. See you in the next one. Take care.